Y'all are really gonna make me do this. The number of Trump assassination conspiracy theories that have been in my comments and in videos I've been tagged in and sent and shit I've seen on other platforms, y'all are starting to sound like climate deniers. Fucking embarrassing. Like, I've done so much goddamn content on confirmation bias and media and conspiracy theory literacy and then this happens and just... Everybody forgets it, apparently. Now y'all are putting me in fucking positions where I'm having to debunk conspiracies that make me feel like I'm defending Donald Trump and I do not fucking like it. Stop putting me in this goddamn position. I don't even know where to start because there is so goddamn many of them. Like Trump golfing without a bandage on his ear the day after. That didn't happen. It was an outdated picture posted by Mike Lee trying to make Trump look like a badass saying, oh look, he can get up in the morning and go golfing after he gets shot. He was treated by a local Pennsylvania hospital Saturday afternoon and was in Milwaukee Sunday morning for the Republican National Convention and the golf course that he was supposedly golfing at was closed. And there's, oh, the crowd was acting weird and didn't move fast enough. And are you, are you fucking kidding me? Number one rule of a plausible conspiracy is how many people are involved because the more people less plausible you know the old saying two people can keep a secret only if one of them is dead but no they managed to get hundreds of spectators in on this plot keep it a secret and then when it's their moment to shine and act like they're being shot at they just like collectively missed their fucking cue not to mention a few people did like actually get shot who did they get to volunteer for that one who shot them in a crowd of people without being seen because i highly doubt that the guy on the roof was going to be whizzing live rounds past the guy who was staging the whole thing to make it just look like he got shot the reality is that life is not like the movies and people in a crowd don't just scatter and run willy-nilly in response to gunshots. If you're in a crowd, you're tuning out any stimuli that isn't what you're focusing on. And even when you do realize that there's gunfire, which is often way after the shooting starts, you don't know where it's coming from most of the time. Because noise bounces off of all kinds of stuff. It makes it sound like it's coming from different directions. If you've ever been deer hunting in the woods, everybody in your hunting party will think a shot came from someplace else. And a supersonic round makes its own sonic boom that sounds like gunfire that changes in perspective to where you are to where that's flying through the air. If you don't know where it's coming from, you don't know where to run, and a lot of people are going to freeze in that situation until they see somebody else do something. And even then, people still don't take it seriously for a long time. Watch the background of the JFK assassination footage. Three shots, two hit Kennedy, who everybody is watching. The third shot very graphically hits Kennedy. And as the car speeds away, you see bystanders still standing there on the side of the road like they're watching a fucking parade. Watch footage from the Vegas shooting. There's lots of it because for some reason, people wanted cell phone footage of Jason Aldean. Three single shots over 30 seconds nobody does a thing. Don't even notice. It's basically like a minute into the shooting and halfway through his first bout of rapid fire that the band finally stops playing. Most of the people still don't run. They stand there and watch for a while longer. And they're like, oh, what's going on? And then they start shuffling off. The crowd did not act weird. The crowd reacted exactly like you'd expect a crowd to react in that situation. And then there's a Secret Service detail. Not having the roof covered seems real sketchy, right? But think about it for a second. Does it, does it really seem that weird that Secret Service messed up? What rally number is this. Every week for nearly a decade, Secret Service has been forced to put together security plans and run security details for one of the most divisive people at ridiculous rallies and court hearings and unfortified residences at New York for his family who refused to move into the White House and Mar-a-Lago in Florida because he's got a golf every fucking weekend. That has been years of unnecessary extensive work he has forced on his protection detail. Then we already know how Trump treats the help. His White House staff alone had more turnovers than a fucking bakery. He really does not like being told no. And who's going to tell him no? Perhaps members of his security detail who are like, nah, sorry, we can't do this stupid shit at your stupid rally because the security risks are too high. How do you think the man that during a literal active shooting situation made his security detail go back and get his shoe and stop for a fist bump photo op treats his security detail behind the scenes? Would you think that the best of the best of the Secret Service are going to stick around and be treated like shit and not be allowed to do their job? Probably not. So like Trump's legal teams, you probably end up with dwindling groups of people who just don't want to work with you anymore. And the ones that are still willing to work with you are not exactly first round draft picks. And they're people working a shitty, thankless job. They get tired, they get fatigued, they make mistakes. And they're going to make a lot more mistakes at a job where they're overworked and they don't like what they're doing. I'd put money on the fact that similar mistakes have been made hundreds of times and this is just the first time somebody actually slips through and exploited that mistake. Could not covering that rooftop been intentional? Possibly. Could it have just been the result of burnt out agents who don't give a shit about their job anymore? 
Probably. Look, while I highly doubt that there's a conspiracy here, conspiracies do certainly happen. But you damn sure ain't gonna find Deep Throat blowing the case wide open, scrolling on your fucking feed. It ain't gonna be one of us cracking the code with some grainy cell phone footage from a thousand miles away with some inside knowledge that nobody else has. We have real problems right now that require real attention, and even in the way off chance that this was staged, it's not one of them. Remember, women's rights to be considered human, civil rights, a guy running for vice president who said he wants an absolute monarchy, and a guy running for president who literally tried overthrowing democracy. Project 2025 trying to make Handmaid's Tale a reality. Conspiracy is here, guys. It is right in front of our fucking faces, out in the open. We don't need to be digging for pointless ones. So we good? Can we stop? Can you know we not not do this anymore? Because these conspiracies are exhausting, and reality is is more than exhausting enough for all of us, as it is. Good talk.